Hi everyone, I'm James Armstrong. Welcome to today's breviary. In 1st and 2nd Peter, the apostle calls on the church to dive deep as a loving community that finds our identity and confidence in who we are in Christ and who we are called to be in the world as kingdom people. See, if we're going to make a difference, then it's going to be because we are a people of faith that speak truth, that live in integrity, and loves with incredible passion. Peter tells us that there are some things that we must first get rid of that are going to hold us back if we're not careful. In chapter 2, verse 1, he says, Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. See, we've got to let go of these things because they'll hold us back from being a loving community. But there is more to this. We've got to pursue what creates love in us. We find this in chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Peter uses an illustration explaining in which way all Christians should be like newborn babies, craving milk. In other words, completely dependent upon God and always longing for nourishment. We have this cat that lives in our home named Minty. It's actually my daughter's cat. But I'm responsible for feeding him. Why? Well, because we were found when everyone was feeding him. It was like this non-stop all-you-can-eat buffet. And the vet told us he was getting a little bit on the heavy side. But now, no matter how much I feed him, he's always following me around, meowing and asking for more food. But this is the kind of craving Peter says that we should have of spiritual things. Always pursuing a deeper walk with God. Always seeking a greater understanding of his word and a holier life that compels us to serve and live for his glory. Essentially, Peter is telling us that you have to, if you've tasted the love of God, then go after and crave the things of God. Internalize God's truth in such a way that it gets metabolized into acts of love, cups of cold water, ministries of compassion. The aim here is spiritual maturity. So chase after this. Search for it. Long for it. Crave it. Milk then becomes the very substance of life, comprising that which Christians need to progress in their spiritual lives. Well, this milk is both the written word and the living word of God. For it is the word that God uses to transform our lives and our heart. Hebrews chapter 4, 12 tells us that the word pierces the depths of our being. Jeremiah 23, 29 says that it breaks the hard ground of the heart. So now may the Lord bless you as you pursue him, pursue the spiritual life that you were called to, and go and make a difference in the world.